augmenting pieces. This is not for the fate of heart, so please, if you get confused easy in life, do not do this. What I want to do is I love this piece right here, and it would fit really nicely if it was curved in this area. So what I need is to curve it. Now, how do I do that? There's no curving of anything. There's no actual deformation here in the engine. So look at this. Right click, export as FBX. I'm going to export this to the desktop. Call it test. Doesn't really matter what you call it. Go into Maya and I'm going to bend that. I need it bent in such a way that it has a 90 degree angle. Okay, so in Maya, I'm just going to go File, Import, go to Desktop, go to Test FBX, and it's going to be somewhere around here. There it is. Now, what I'm going to do here is make it on top of the grid. So if you hold X, it will snap it to the grid. Just like that. Six on the keyboard allow you to go into this. And you can see that this mesh is nothing cool. You know what I mean? It's it's pretty basic. All right, let's go to animation. Let's go to create deformers and go to linear bend. Okay, there should be some kind of wire running down the side of it, inside of it now. You can see that wire. And in this case, what I want to do is go to the bend go to curvature and bend this what I want to do is send it to right about there and then I want to take it and take the low bound and straighten it back out I think that would give me a better piece to fit in that corner so let me go look at the engine again, just to kind of see this corner. I need one that curves and then one merge to curve the other way. I'm pretty sure. If not, I can make a couple variations of these because I can always use these in the future. So I like this piece. What I want to do is now export it. to take materials off and choose FBX. Export selection, desktop, call it test two or fixed or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. Oh, uh, one other thing, sorry. Edit. Let's take this. Shift D to duplicate it. Modify center pivot. Edit. Delete by type history. You got to make sure you delete by type history and you got to make sure this is in world space. There's a couple things that I forgot, but that's about it. And it all depends how you want your pivot point. Uh, I think it would be easier if this pivot was over here. So, dog Victor to put it to the corner. X to put this in the center of the world. And again, edit, delete by type history. There we go. So now we are able to export the selection. Test to FBX, make sure it's FBX. And then we can go plummeting back into Content Browser, where I can now import from the desktop. Test to FBX, I'll open that up. Where do I want to put it? I want to put it within text, the neck roofs. 
and I'll call this roof curve. Yep. Perfect. Now, how do I get the material back on it? Well, that becomes a little bit of an issue, so let me just save current level first. And let me make sure I save this package. Right click, save. Okay, anytime you see a star next to it, that means you have to save your package. When you're going plummeting through the engine, make sure you just save every once in a while, especially when you're dealing with a content browser. It could crash. I won't lie. Here, level of detail information. Drop this down. And there we have our area where I can go clicking this button. Now I have the material. And if I wanted to, I could probably just um, copy this string. That would be the fastest way. So copy that string. Go back to neck roofs. Double click on this one that needs it. You just level detail information, drop that down. elements, materials. In this case, I'm just going to paste this in. And voila, and now I have a bent part. Very cool, right? Endless possibilities there. All right, uh, by closing this out, it'll automatically save it. And now I can use that inside my scene. Oh. See how it says no collision model? Double click that, go to collision, and just do an auto convex because I don't think we're gonna ever make a collision model that'll fit this, and hit apply. Okay, I want it just a little bit higher than that. So this is this collision model basically allows it so nobody can clash through the object. But you don't want too much of a collision because it costs a lot. Not too much, but just just enough to be annoying. All right, I think that's good. Let's close that out. Close this out, and now it says no, nothing about a warning about collisions anymore. Now I can put this in here, and let's see if I was right about the the type of part I need. I think I'll need one more. Not quite sure. Now putting that pivot point there allows me to do that. I can stretch this out just a little bit, stretch it out this way just a little bit, and try to feed it in there. So just playing around with that. And I think I will have to make one for the other side or at least kind of make it so it's in the same size range on the other side. But I can augment the actual vertices too without hurting it. But what I did want to show you is the fact that, you know, you can take it into Maya, you can augment it, you can bring it back, you can add the material. Uh, just be careful how much augmentation you do because you don't want to screw up the UVs on the object, okay? So I'm going to go back in and repair just a little bit of this or at least make it so it's a different angle. And then um, that's it. So I won't be showing that in the video because I already showed you this part. Enjoy the 
augmentation video. 